Government now pursuing local refinery. Last stop slapped with another defamation suit. And government mapping out oil blocks ahead of oil auction. And this is Uncut News. Do you see what's happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-615. Today, the president announced that the government will soon be seeking expressions of interest from the private sector for the construction of a small modular refinery with a capacity of 30,000 barrels per day to satisfy local fuel demand. CEO of Guy Invest, Peter Ramsrup, said the government hoped to possibly build the refinery near a river in Berbice. It should be noted that the locally registered company, Guy Energy, back in 2018, had announced plans to build a 30,000 barrel per day modular refinery in Linden. But there was no progress on the effort which was pushed by Terrain Durga. And, well, like many things in Guyana, politics caught in the way. Either way, I'm happy they see the writing on the wall and they're finally doing this. The mother of a four-year-old girl who is hospitalized in a critical state at the New Amsterdam Hospital has confessed to force-feeding the child Gramazone following a drunken argument with her husband on Sunday in the number 70 village Burbies. The woman reportedly told police that she threatened to poison their two children and end her own life. However, the woman only managed to force-feed the poison to the four-year-old before the child reportedly informed her father of what transpired. The 23-year-old woman and her husband are currently in police custody. 19-year-old GTI student Roel Samuel Granham died on Monday, three days after he and a friend were beaten by a gang of six males, three of whom were still in their school uniform. Relatives explained that Granham's skull was fractured in two places and he suffered internal bleeding. The police have so far identified one of the suspects. Police Sergeant Dion Bascom has been slapped with another $50 million defamation lawsuit. 44-year-old Mark Richmond, a security guard with Mohammed's Enterprise, filed the suit against Bascom after the detective accused him of being the trigger man in the Ricardo Fagundes paper short murder investigation. So far, Bascom is looking at over $200 million in lawsuits from four individuals. 17-year-old Niam Chan Ram narrowly escaped with his life after he was kidnapped by four men in a car on Sunday. According to reports, he was forced into a vehicle in Diamond, East Bank Demerara, and taken to an isolated area along the Sustike Linden Highway. There, the men attempted to kill the teen by stabbing him several times, but he managed to escape by running into some nearby bushes where he hid until sunrise. Ram is currently hospitalized in a stable condition. It might not be robbery season, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business through Sheriff Security Service. Sheriff Security offers well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrol, canine services. These people even got drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest. Now hire the best. Hire Sheriff Security Service today. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's Car of the Week. Currently on sale is this 2016 Toyota Crown Athlete. It comes with Bluetooth, mark rims, no tires, TV, CD, stereo, fog lumps, pop camera, and much, much more. Buy cash for $9.95 million, or pay as low as $1.99 million down with around $170,000 monthly for five years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Oh, visit their showroom cell 171 Peter Street, Queenstown, a lot to Amar Street, and Southern America Century for this sweet deal. Over in New Amsterdam, 33-year-old Oren Esmond Bristol was arrested on Sunday and charged with cannabis possession. But it was during the police investigations that detectives realized that he was actually wanted for questioning in relation to the unlawful killing of Cleveland Hetmeyer on April 4, 2010, during a robbery at Sliver Bailey, Cutter Creek, Kanji River, Burbies. However, at court today, he was not required to plead to the indictable charge and as such was remanded to prison until October 10th. Four years after 24-year-old Shanice Lawrence was fatally stabbed, her common-law husband, 37-year-old Jermaine Bristol, is finally being arraigned for the crime. He admitted that he murdered Lawrence on August 22, 2018 during a heated argument. In fact, he turned himself into the police station immediately following the murder. Nonetheless, the High Court has adjourned the case until October 27, 2022. The government has received U.S. 
$12.2 million in financing from the Caribbean Development Bank to roll out the Guyana Skills Development and Employability Project. The initiative will see practical instruction centers across the nation being boosted to deliver technical, vocational, education, and training programs, also known as TVET programs. The Ministry of Education has tendered the supply of tools and equipments for six practical instruction centers in 10 volts. These include homekeeping, masonry and steel fixing, motor vehicle repairs, plumbing, welding and fabrication, commercial food preparation, graphic design, garment making and furniture making. All necessary skills for today's society. Now for today's oil update. Guyana now ranks second only to Kuwait on the list of nations with the highest oil reserves per capita. At 11 billion oil equivalent barrels, the IMF has Guyana positioned as the nation with the 17th largest proven petroleum reserves in the world. However, that number is expected to increase, as some analysts believe there could be as much as 20 billion oil equivalent barrels in Guyana. And in other oil news, According to Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat, the government is mapping out the offshore oil blocks that will be up for bidding so that there can be a greater understanding of what is available. Bharat pointed out that Exxon relinquished some acreage on the Kanji block based on their agreement, so that will be included in the bidding. The auction will be an open process that will last several months. They said the time frame could last anywhere from three to six months, but they will announce when it begins. The bidding is expected to start before the year's end. Attention truck owners, if you're not shopping with Powered Automotive, you're wasting your money. Powered Automotive has all the major brands like Bedford Tier, Scammel, International and more. No need to knock your belly here, they have all the parts you need at prices you can afford. Visit them at Lot 1161 EE Echoes or call or WhatsApp them on telephone number 697-0171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy duty truck parts store in Ghana. You can multiply your cash by selling Digicel Top Up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a Top Up vendor quick and easy by linking with Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 6853109 for more info. Now for our uncut news. Views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it least was. Last night I asked, what infrastructure project do you believe the government should invest in? The realist one says, we need a train from Burbese to Linden, and another to Latum. Also bring back those big buses we once had. I agree, I really like that idea. Barefoot Wanderer says, is it possible to create community gardens in villages where many are poor? The government should provide land within the community, provide training for those living within the community, and lastly, provide the seeds that are needed. This way, those who are having a hard time financially can benefit and feed their families. Crop sharing amongst neighbors in the summer is a benefit. It also helps to reduce your grocery bills. Just a thought. Honestly, why aren't we doing this? This makes so much sense. I mean, not just for the poor people, this should literally be a nationwide thing. Daryl Andrews thinks we need to take it a step further and go large scale with agriculture. And we need to feed the world. I like that idea. We once fed the Caribbean, of course we can feed the world, if we put our minds to it. And finally, Lash says, renewable like solar projects and especially wave power. The technology in ocean wave power generation would serve us very well. We should at least have a feasibility study done. I agree 100%. I really like that idea. Now for tonight's question. How do you feel about the government's idea to start looking for investors in a local oil refinery? Do you think it's great that we're finally building one? Or do you think it'd probably be a waste of money? Or will it be somewhere in between? I'm really curious, so I want to hear from you all. I want you to think about that question. Tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Bullford saying goodnight, folks.